it's not good when these fires form so close to where people live. Russ Schumacher, the Colorado State University climatologist, says Mother Nature's invisible force, wind, which we saw 50 mile per hour gusts during the NCAR fire, plays a huge hand. Not like what we saw from the Marshall Fire. A whole day of like 70 plus. Camille Stevens Ruman, a forest and fire ecology expert, echoing wind is why during the Marshall Fire, the smoke kept traveling. At 60 miles per hour, the wind is going to kind of, the, the smoke is going to kind of lay down, right, and follow that really driving wind. But during the NCAR fire, you can see portions of the smoke going directly up. It wasn't nearly that that gusty, right? So it had the opportunity to actually, for the atmosphere and the air to go up. Leading up to the Marshall Fire in November and December, Stevens Ruman says our state didn't have a lot of moisture. Fuels were really dried out. Uh, and ready to burn much more than they are now. And once the Marshall Fire touched homes, it became a different beast to battle. So we see these home-to-home -home ignitions. But if you look closely at the video from the NCAR fire, the saving grace was the snow on the ground. That moisture that's in all of those plants, dead and living, are really changed some of that fire, initial fire behavior. There was no red flag warning issued either the day of the Marshall Fire or Saturday when the NCAR fire sparked. Schumacher says since there was some humidity in the air both days. There's been a lot of discussion of, you know, should these criteria be changed?